And I even told him, you have lost the opportunity to, to hand over power peacefully really, yes. because you have failed, you have removed the, the wound, the term limit. I said, why don't you accept to be, to retire, to be called the person who built the good multi-party political system in Uganda. Mm. Because I was saying, if NRI mobilizes and you leave FDC, because the FD, the members of FDC were all from NRIM anyway. So the NRIM had produced the two parties. And I said, leave BCJ to mobilize and he will not get a lot, many, many votes. But he will get like 30% when you get like 50%. And then the next year, the, the party, they will increase. And then eventually, by the time you retire, you will, you will have built a good multi-party political system in this country. In other words, the football field mm. would have been cleaned up. Didn't he to your voice? I told him, even if you go and ask him, me, I talk things uh, against him, but at the same time, mm. uh, when I get opportunity, I tell him, and I say the good he, he does. So I don't regret. Okay. What I regret <coughs> is that what I had hoped for is not what happened. <laughs> The, the, the party stole the movement. He's a thief. They stole the movement and made it into a party, which mm. was very wrong. And therefore, it would have won while other parties. And by the way, I had an opportunity to go and talk to him. To go and talk to him to say, please, when we were in the CA, <coughs> we said that we want to to amend the playground, you know, the, mm. when you have yes. football and the playground is spoiled, it has pores, it, what, holes and, and what and hills and whatever, you have to repair it. And after repairing it, then you would start playing the football. So we said that the, the football, the democratic football, the ground, the, the democratic ground for Uganda had got pitfalls, had got to hills, has got. So we have we have to 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 clean it mm. and and level it. And after we had leveled it, then we would go into the real multi party match, yeah. mm. political democracy. We would go into a match. That's what we believed. That's what we are saying. That's why we suspended, you know, the political parties, let them be in abeyance, and, and then I remember when we were discussing in CA. I, I said goodbye to him very well because I told him, okay. sir, I told him, sir, in Chankwa's 2003, I said, you have done so good. Mm. You have done so good for us. I wouldn't want you being, being called a swine, like mm. you call others swine. I told him, you see, you call about a swine, you call a mean swine, but they came also as presidents. Now, I wouldn't want you to be called a swine. I want you to finish with the term limit and go home and guide Uganda. Mm. He refused. I told him he refused. Now, if he had really listened to me and, and organized the Ugandans so that we, we get a new president, the NRIM would have won as a party because the NRIM, by the way, they stole the movement. Kutere vinyonga, tituna gena mprogramu ya Yoruba Rukan Sokensi Jewu mentioned unu kuteno nyo gwe nango uliye yungu ya gara kusura vya maguzi okuva muanga nga China, Turkey, Dubai, wamu nense ndara ngubile tamu guanga Uganda muana tunku zigiri dejipia abali vya kagoba kugamantua saulo kukolelo muni mugu no kubeye in Sam Sam gata ya kutesa ilanga basaula no kuya ambako kukolela shopping kumikutu ya mibede jimanyi duanga Alibaba, Shane, wamu nemi la minji bano basaula no kuya ambako supplier connections oba kukuyunga kuwa suppliers abakugua 
wabata genda kukunya ganga ateba manyi chebakola sako no kukuya amba kusonga yoku kili ya ringa emisolo mguanga Uganda. Okumanyi bisinga oso ulo kuita website ya we www.aliviacargolg.com Oboku wa kuwila kunamba ze simu note msambu tano bili bili munana nya muenda msambu note. Oba plus 861-856-534-3785 Oba wasange kujena plaza eduka namba GF09 kunkruma road emabega wacham towers baku kore romuli mwa matendo gwe eyetaga of course abagendo kusigira ranji mugwanga Uganda ali mchibuga Kampala ali ewelwe gwanga nenga business zozo kolera mu gwanga Uganda osoro kwe kwa tabana faba Ebenezer painters basanga mchibuga Kampala era baso kubera nga basige kizimbe cyo ranji okwetorera gwanga Uganda wonna oja kubera ngo ulizigana no mukuru Lule Joseph kunamba ze simu ezo kubera nga mukwatagana burundi nyo asige kizimbe cyo Lunch again oxkiza buli muntu e kwese chiti but zimbe chikwese chiti or appearance sako no kwa look over face e chizimbe chigen oku take a business yo kumutindo o gwensio na beba ebeneza painters brand pro property services Uganda Limited omkuru Ivan Yante Geze Zanti Mwabali e Dubai yes Esther says Zola Babu Televunyo ziri available ya oso kuwela nganawe uh, alinamu kusentu bangu ya gara yeso gena maso kore la emili mjo ewe uwe guanga ne mchugamu Dubai ne senda langa UK, USA, Sako ne India so far oso kuwela nga ofuna enyumba yes Sako ne mtubi guwa mko ya real estate mguanga Uganda oso funa proti uwe taka wana kore la emili mujo business obo okulima oba oba okulonda ne bilala byonna eroja kwera ngo be kwata brand property services Uganda limited na bulichimwe chekusa ku nsonga ezettaka oja kwera nga obe kwata no wetaga msaveya wetaga chi likalonda yena gwa mu kowe elia real estate oja kwera nga kwata brand property services Uganda limited the word of god says that in all things we must give thanks yes. to God. Yes. Because he's the one. Indeed, he's the one who chooses that I, I should be here. Yeah. And even talking to you right yes. now. Can you imagine? Yeah. We must thank him uh, purely for that life and that you're still speaking. Because many politicians who go into retirement like you, few of them can actually spare time to keep doing what they were doing. You know, for me, I was forced into retirement. Yes. I didn't retire voluntarily. Voluntarily. And therefore, I still, oh, I'm still equipped with my biggest talent, which God gave me, yeah. which is my mouth, which mm. he gave me according to Isaiah chapter 49, verse 1 to 3, you go and read. Mm. So I will use that talent of the mouth until he calls me home. Yeah. And even when I reach there, I will use it to account to him mm. on what I did. Yeah. Because all of us are really accountable to our God for the talents that he gave us to use. In service of our people, mm. not in service of ourselves. In fact, yes. in service of his people, mm. not ourselves. But what I can recall generally, mm. it hasn't been really a beautiful year. Okay. Especially for the powerless, for the voiceless, and for the weak. Mm. It hasn't. For the rich and those who are grabbing our land, who are yes. taking all the wealth, who, it could have been good for them. But I want to tell you that one day the wicked will perish. Mm. But for the vulnerable, for the weak, for the powerless, it has been a bad year. Mm. Because I personally has even been fighting. It has not been just the state doing wrong, but also individual people doing wrong. Mm. You, like you find these parents who have gone crazy, the, the, the parents who are marrying out their daughters at 15, at 14, girls have been running to my home here and have been running all over the place with the help of, of police to, to redeem girls from marriage to return cows. Mm. You know, it has been, when I talk of the weak and the vulnerable, the, the impact is not from the state only, state institutions, but also yes. the human beings. Mm. The level of moral decadence and ethical value degeneration has raised okay. so high, mm. and, and, and humanity seems to have left human beings and people are driven by self-centeredness, by materialism, by wealth, 
on and uh, stepping on the weak, the vulnerable, mm. and and the powerless. And of course, the state also has been involved in, in some of these things. For instance, when you go to people who are grabbing land, whom do you find? You find big people mm. who are backed by big people in government. For instance, I tell you there is a certain case I'm following up. And the, the father came here crying, telling me, the man is big, the man is big, big. I say, is it, is it size that is big mm. because he's the chairman, the vice chairman, Soro, 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 NRIM okay. resistance movement mm. party. And then she's the chairman of Central, Central in Soro district. This is a guy who defiled a girl who abducted her and used her. And I got the girl when she was unconscious, dying. Mm. I followed the matter to the maximum ability. I reached the police, eventually arrested him, put him in. But what did the court do? Release him on bail on a charge which is not bailable. And he's there walking on the street. And the parent is still coming here. And so I'm telling you, the state institutions have been captured by the state. The state has captured the big people in authority, captured institutions like the courts. The courts cannot be free to administer mm. justice mm. Okay. because powers from above are stopping them. And, and the, the, the legislation, of course, the legislature you can see mm. recently mm. what I saw really. Instead of defending like these people who have been, their members who have been in prison for good two, they are going to two years, two years now yeah. in prison. For, for what? Because no, who, who stops them from, because the law I studied is that once you have, you are in, co in prison for a whole year without the case mm. being decided or mm. had, mm. then bail is automatic. But here we have the speaker, instead of redeeming his people, those colleagues, they are talking about their own things. They are fighting mm. their own wars. They are, they are censuring the, the, the opposition. Driving they are doing posh cars. all this kind of thing. Yeah. Posh cars, which they don't even. The other day I listened to this hopeless. Sorry. <laughs> let me withdraw the word, yeah, okay. but mm. they have had it. Mm. <laughs> when I had this a Kenya man saying that 200 million is a little money to buy us very good vehicles. Oh my. And in any case, we need. 400 and we need a driver who is paid for i want to ask and i'm not praising myself mm. me miriam Atembe, i worked for this government for good 30 years yes out of the 30 that 20 i was a politician mm. you go all over uganda you hear where they don't know matembe but i never got a free vehicle i never got a free vehicle i got a loan and bought my vehicle yes i never got a free driver i never got anything free Everything was from my Casmoro money of seven million mm. a month, which I earned to travel the whole country to go everywhere. Now, who are they? These these new people who have taken the biggest budget in this in this country. Who are they to say that even look at the teachers? The teachers cannot be paid. The doctors do not have their salary. They don't have they don't even have vehicles. The hospitals are suffering, and then the members of parliament, moreover, 529, whose talk we don't even hear, whose debate we don't even see, they want beyond 200 million to buy them. Who are they? Who are they? Is there any single member of parliament who is better than a teacher who teaches mm. my children, mm. who is the better doctors. than a doctor who has, for yeah. instance, operated my eye? Mm. Eh? What are they doing? There they are. And then, of course, when you go to government itself, because of the greed to stay in power forever, eh? mm. they, they, they have shut down the people. Civil society yes. cannot talk. Mm. It was shut down. Most of them were disbanded. Oh, 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 Sedu, yeah. I was, mm. I was there, spearheading Sedu, mm. Citizens Coalition for Electoral Democracy, which was good, you know, to oversee yes. and watch Elections, over the yeah. democratic, democratic governance. Yes, yeah. you, you remember uh, Chapter 4, mm -hmm. you remember Gliese, mm. you remember because we are the voice talking, when they shut us down, 
the rest of civil society now are concerned with every day-to-day -day official work, not publicly. Do you hear their voice anymore? Not so really. the voice of the people, the voice of the people have become voiceless. Because those whom they elect to go and voice for them, mm. voice for themselves, the government they put in power shuts them down. The civil society was supposed to be talking for them, raising their concerns. They are shut down. And if you continue, they arrest you. Yes, now, you anybody now who goes to the public to open the eyes, to, to teach people, mm. unless you are NRIM, if you are not NRIM, you are another person, and you go to, to, the, to the public, to talk to the people, mm. they don't want you to do so. On many occasions, I remember even uh, uh, on the eve of actually, or before the elections of the 2021 elections, mm. about the closure of many civil society organizations, President Museven addressed the nation and said that some of these organizations were actually dealing with uh, uh, Europeans actually to uh, do uncertain things, to do bad things to this country which is not good for democracy. He said that's why uh, organizations like GLIS, like SEDU, and uh, this one actually, which was uh, putting a lot of money in Uganda. Uh, DGF. DGF. Hmm. They were doing... Ante, what I'm contrary. telling you now, well, I have talked and talked about absence of democracy in this country. This country has nothing to do with democracy. Democracy ended long ago mm. when the term limit was removed, the age limit was removed, and the whole thing surrounded NRM as a party. Mm. And as a party, it is in form of one individual, and that is one president, Museveni. Mm. And unless NRM says something, Anybody else should do what? Should not say anything. Now, in, in the democratic de governance, we have alternative views. Mm -hmm. That is what democratic governance means. Yes. Moreover, multi-party democratic governance. Mm. It understands and recognizes dif divergent views. Mm. And these divergent views are respected. When you run for government, and one party wins, the other party is opposition. Opposition is not an enemy. Opposition is a party which offers an alternative view, which says, if it was me, I would do like this. And therefore, its role in parliament and in government is to constructively critique the government yes. by opening its eyes. You are failing here. You are failing here. You are not doing right here. That is what opposition is supposed to do. Now, civil society organizations are supposed to supplement the work of government. Because I have worked, I established many civil society organizations, mm. particularly human rights and women's rights. And before the government went into dictatorship, before President Museveni's government became a dictatorship, we were working, supplementing the work of the government. Why? Because we reach everywhere. Civil society, you find an organization, NGO, is there in, in a village, they mobilize themselves, they try to make, to make themselves knowledgeable, they, they equip them with the knowledge to do with the law, with the knowledge to do economy, with the knowledge, and they, and they grow. And so they reach everywhere. We were reaching everywhere. I remember if it was not for civil society organizations like UESO, mm, when the yes. first lady came here, and yes. we, 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 with her, we mobilized and formed UESO. We redeemed the orphans. The government could not have done anything to the orphans whom we redeemed. And some of them are now big, big people in this country. And then, of course, Action for Development, then Women Lawyers Association, then uh, you, 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 all these organizations, Foundation for Human Rights, we started these organizations and we're working very closely with the government. 
because we were complimenting the work of government. Mm. Now, I want the public listening to me to understand what happens when dictatorship comes in. Because when you are working, civil society, you are supposed to do what is good. You are supposed to criticize what is not good. Because you are working for the people. Yes. The people. So when things go wrong, you are supposed to question them and challenge them. Mm. In a democratic government, when you challenge them, they feel good. They say, hey, we have foreign, foreign shot here. Because I remember when I was in civil society in, in the Mbarara District Women Development Association, the Minister of Gender itself gave me funding to go and train women in Mbarara because for them they did not have the capacity to go and train. So they funded me in Mbarara to mm. go and, and train women. And then even when I would bring proposals and put them there, even American embassy, where, where, they would fund us and we mobilize and we train women on their legal rights on economic empowerment. And the country was better. I'm telling you, the people on the ground were much better than what they are now. But when dictatorship comes in, it doesn't want any criticism. And therefore, if you are civil society organization, they label, because you will criticize, so they label you an enemy. Mm. And now, many of the civil society organizations which have remained here, some of them, they are a agents of, of what? Mm. Some of them mm. have been mm. recruited as agents of, of the government. So the, thing, the most important thing, bad thing that has happened here in this country is close down of democratic governance, Right now, we are in a total dictatorship because I have lived in this country for long. Yes. These days, you go and sit near somebody and you raise anything to, hey, but government, oh, they walk away. They run away. They are so scared. The fear has gripped Uganda just like it was in Amin's time as it was in Oboti's time. And for me, I'm so glad that I'm one person who has remained alive in these governments. I don't know both the one, mm, mm. but I know I mean, and I know both the two. And sometimes I say that probably why some of these people who are in NRIM, probably why they don't understand when we are telling them what, what we see, is because they never remained here. While I was here suffering during Obote II's time, President Museven and his people, Bushmen, were not here. They were in the bush. They can't tell you, they can't tell the story of what they suffered in the bush, but they can't tell the story of what we are going through here. Mm. If I tell you how I suffered, me, I suffered, I was at Uganda College of Commerce teaching. There was this man called Owani. He would say, look at your nose, go, follow your brother in the bush. Eh, young men who were in, you know, in school, in, in UCC, they had to go away. You would say, look at your nose. And the man tortured me, my temper, go and follow your brother in the bush. And you know, it was so painful. We suffered, we ran. If you ask my husband, they arrested him, put him in prison, knocked his teeth. We went through many bad things. We know this. And so when the president came in, we embraced 100%. Never did I expect that such a thing would come back. Now I'm the one now suffering. Can you imagine? Mm. Well, I suffered during Obote time. Obote's time, Now yes. during my, my, my brother's time, he throws me away, get out. And, you mm. know, I was for, voluntarily retired when I still had the energy to work for this country. But I'm so glad that for me, because God protects me, hey, hey, who can come? When the angels are on guard, you let them. <laughs> but otherwise, I'm here now suffering. Mm. I expected us to to be redeemed. But I want to tell President Museven and his people that what we saw in Amin's time, what we saw in Oboti's time, what we experienced is what we are experiencing now. And therefore, it is a dictatorship. It is a dictatorship. That's why people are suffering. Doctor, back to justice. We and by the way, one yeah. thing I want to say is this. Yes, there are these ADF Mm -hmm. whom they are arresting and, and killing. But I want to tell you that if it was not for dictatorship and closing space for other people of alternative views, we wouldn't be having these wars. Mm. We wouldn't. Because if all Ugandans who can speak can freely speak here, if Ugandans can go and hold free and fair elections here, 
when the electoral commission is not a direct agent of NRIM, eh? if the electoral commission was independent, if electoral processes were fair and running in the right way, if we go and we lose the election, would we run to the bush or would we have to be arrested? Eh? And you know one thing that hurts me is that President Museven himself experienced the reading of elections. He experienced the reading of elections mm. and he said, when these elections are rigid, I will go to the bush. And when they were rigid, he went to the bush. And he used to say when he came back that democracy is not a form. Yes. Democracy is not in form. And I agreed with him 100%. Because of what he was saying, yeah, we went through elections. But which elections? When like 40 seats were already declared unopposed because people were closed out, when you are going to your uh, uh, polling, you are, you are locked out, you cannot be nominated, time is, it takes over, uh, time runs up when you are imprisoned somewhere. I mean, and then you say that is election. So President Museven came and said, democracy is substance, not in a no, form. Yeah, not form yeah. It is not in a form, it must be in substance. Can you imagine that this is the very person who is now saying, yeah, I'm elected by Ugandans. Yeah. He has turned elections and democracy into mere form, not substance. And I, I wonder, I usually wonder, you know, for me, Maria, I can't say something today and tomorrow I say another one. Mm. I stick to what I say. But now, you mean he doesn't see that his democracy has turned into a total, total form, total form, nothing to do with substance. Doctor, do you sit back and, rel and ponder about uh, or even regret trusting President M7 for all those years? Me? Yeah, do you regret? Uh -uh. It? Me, I don't regret anything because first of all, and I say it clear and I usually repeat it and the, the new people don't like me. Mm. The opposition doesn't like me. Me, I say I'm so grateful to President Museveni. Yeah, okay. I will say it and repeat it again. Because when he came and took over government, eh, he established a political environment mm. that enabled me to realize my childhood dream. My childhood dream was to fight for women's rights mm. for gender equality and women's empowerment i had that dream when i was nine years that's why i studied law that's why for me when i went to politics i didn't just go there because i wanted politics mm. i went to politics to use it as a platform to espouse the cause for gender equality and women's empowerment and the good thing as if and i call it that is god's purpose for my life that's why he gave me my mouth that's why he gave me my courage that's why he gave me... Do you know that, by the way, in 1998, I was chosen as one of a hundred women world over who had made a tremendous impact and acted as role models for the women in the whole world. Do you know that? I have my certificate. Mm. If it was not for President Seven who came in and took over and declared, came with the woman question high upon the agenda, I would have died with my dream because during the time, there is one time after, when we had formed Ackford in Nairobi, mm. after the Nairobi conference, we formed Ackford, and Okero was now in power because Obote was overthrown when they were in Nairobi at the conference. And the, the first lady who had led the delegation never came back. And they had not taken us on their delegation because we were not UPC. Mm. You see? Yes. So we, we, we formed action for development and we started, we wanted to demonstrate against the rape and the murder of women mm. during that Okero time. It was terrible. They were murdering women. They were raping them everywhere. And, uh, and we said, no, we must demonstrate. And when they knew that we were going to go in the city square, the current constitutional mm square they 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 organized that they will go there and rape us and so one woman was working in radio uganda she rang us at night and said you people don't go to the city square yeah they are going they have planned the army had planned that they will go and rape us and so we said let's go and prove we went not as demonstrators this time each of us went their own way and walked in front of those shops at the city square but for sure the army had surrounded the city square and they were ready to go and rape us. You can imagine. 
and it is after that now that uh, President Museven came in with NRIM and he said, women, where are you? Oh my God, you should read my book mm. which I wrote. So for me, I don't regret. First of all, he brought that environment. Second, let me tell you whether you like it or not, President Museven's NRIM, the National Resistance Movement, picked us from a deep ditch, a deep ditch. For me, I remember one time, I was watching the TV. Imagine I was a lawyer. Lawyers were turned into nothing. We could not talk. We were... <laughs> this old, I can't go into that. It's a long story. But it was too much. One time, I remember, I saw, uh, was it Tito Kero on TV and uh, Bazirio Kero. Bazirio and you know they were not mm. educated. Yes. And Bazirio was saying, you know, Oboche, Called you the mm. ditch problem, and oh, I, I, I picked. I think I picked a stone. I said I'm going to throw this stone at my TV, as if it was the TV which <laughs> was causing the problem. You can. I'm telling mm. you to see where, how deep we had gone. For sure, anybody who refuses to say that really an Arab government, when they came mm. from the bush, they they lifted us out ditch. I want to say that at least, at least, for the first 10 years, okay. it, was, it to... was fantastic. Okay. Fantastic. Because for me, when they said, hey, women, where are you? I came out like a dog which was caged somewhere. Mm. But the gate was open. I ran out and fought for the women's cause. And I can tell you, during my time, Oh, 20 years in the politics of this country, women really reached somewhere. They really did, especially those in my Mbarara district. You know, Mbarara now is seven districts or whatever. By then it was 49 sub-counties and 10 counties. But women there, even when you go there, these days I meet young boys, they say, Hello, how are you? You were a friend of my mother. She was your agent. Mm. You know, even the family would say, my team is there, the pictures would be there. And we worked, I can assure you, we worked. And then we came out with the constitution. And you know, I was a constitutional commission. Yes, I traversed the whole mm. country. And we told to Ugandans and we said this is the first time Ugandans are going to decide to make their nation themselves. And we did. And after doing we that, did, we did. So, for me, mm. I don't regret. I did, I, he gave me the opportunity to serve my country. He gave me the opportunity to also be, some, be known. I mean, I want to ask. Mm. Miriam Matembe was there teaching. I was at Bank of Uganda as a lecturer in a low and English. That name, Matembe, the only one who knew it was the, the, the what? The people I was teaching, who is and my family. Mm. So but were known because to when NRIM government came in and I embraced it, I ran with my cause to the whole world. I'm telling you, when one time I stood at an African platform to speak on behalf of Uganda, you know, I used even before I became this minister, you know, mm. me, I was actually cheated all throughout. Because despite the fact that I was vibrant and working so hard, I was busy working, working, working. Other people were busy becoming ministers, big, 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 big. And uh, last day at final, last minute, uh, uh, President Museven decided, I think this woman, because she has integrity and corruption is killing us, let me mm. give her this uh, job. And when I went there and, and, and went with my vibrance and speaking the truth, uh, it could not work. I said, get out of here. So I went. But even before I was a minister, I used to represent Uganda. Me, I used to represent Uganda everywhere. In, in, Beijing, in, Beijing. in Beijing, when I, one day I stood at the international platform in Beijing conference to speak on the participation, the strategies to increase participation of women in politics and governance. And after I, have, I had talked to this whole vast meeting, people stood up and clapped and clapped. I said, surely, can I now not thank him seven for, for enabling me, at least as an individual, mm. to realize my vision and my passion? That's why you see me seated at home very comfortable, although still suffering, running with women's cause, because I had a childhood dream. 
And the Lord enabled me through the government of Museven to realize this childhood dream. And I documented it. And I lived beyond. I'm telling you. And my children grew up. Seven came when my biggest child was 10 years. And eventually we start, they studied, they finished. I have grandchildren, I have what? So, for me, I don't regret. So I on the other hand, God. you're grateful for the come, about the coming uh, of Mum Seven. Uh, um, yes, I mean, let me tell you. You people, you are very interesting. You, do you mean you, when you somebody does wrong, eh? mm. when somebody ro does wrong, then you, you cancel everything, everything right that he has done? Do you cancel everything right that I has done? In fact, me, I, I said goodbye to him very well because I told him, okay. sir, I told him, sir, in Chankwa's 2003, I said, you have done so good. Mm. You have done so good for us. I wouldn't want you being, being called a swine like mm. you call others swine. I told him, you see, you call about a swine, you call a mean swine, but they came also as presidents. Now, I wouldn't want you to be called a swine. I want you to finish with the term limit and go home and guide Uganda. Mm. He refused. I told him he refused. Now, if he had really listened to me and, and organized the Ugandans so that we, we get a new president, the NRM would have won as a party because the NRM, by the way, they stole the movement. The, the, the party stole the movement. He's a thief. They stole the movement and made it into a party, which mm. was very wrong. And therefore, it would have won while other parties. And by the way, I had an opportunity to go and talk to him. To go and talk to him to say, please, when we were in the CA, <coughs> we said that we want to to amend the playground, you know, that mm. when you have yes. football and the playground is spoiled, it has pores, it, what, holes and, and what and hills and whatever, you have to repair it. And after repairing it, then you would start playing the football. So we said that the, the football, the democratic football, the ground, the, the democratic ground for Uganda had got pitfalls, had got to hills, has got. So we have we have to 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 clean it mm. and and level it. And after we had leveled it, then we would go into the Rio Madrid yeah. mm. political democracy. We would go into a match. That's what we believed. That's what we are saying. That's why we suspended, you know, the political parties, let them be in abeyance, and, and then I remember when we were discussing in CA, Sister Oguaro said, but how can you put us in mutuary? Eh? You put us in mutuary and we cannot go out to operate. I, I stood up and said, no, Sister, you are not in mutuary. You are in intensive care. You are in intensive care and we are taking care of you. So once you heal, mm. then we shall go, all of us, into the playground and we had said that NRIM as a movement would be the mother of the good new political parties. You hear? We were saying all this and so when when FDC came onto the scene mm. and President Museven got up to fight BCG, I went and reminded him I said but your excellency don't you remember we said that the movement would be the womb for the good, new good multi-party uh, part parties to, to form the multi-party political system in Uganda. Now, the NRIM party has been born out of the movement. FDC has been born out of movement. So the time has come for the movement to produce the parties. Why don't you leave these two parties yes. to be free mm. and organize and mobilize, and then we move on. And I even told him, you have lost the opportunity to, to hand over power peacefully yes, yes. because you have failed, you have removed the, the wound, the term limit. I said, why don't you accept to be, to retire, to be called the person who built 
the good multi-party political system in Uganda. Mm. Because I was saying, if NRI mobilizes and you leave FDC, because the FD, the members of FDC were all from NRIM anyway. So the NRIM had produced the two parties. And I said, leave Vesige to mobilize and he will not get a lot, many, many votes. But he will get like 30% when you get like 50%. And then the next year, the, the party, they will increase. And then eventually, by the time you retire, you will, you will have built a good multi-party political system in this country. In other words, the football field mm. would have been cleaned up. Didn't he to your voice? I told him, even if you go and ask him, me, I talk things uh, against him, but at the same time, mm. uh, when I get the opportunity, I tell him, and I say the good he, he does. So I don't regret. Okay. What I regret <coughs> is that what I had hoped for is not what happened. Actually, when, when I was still in NRM, I used to see people parting with President Museven getting so angry, so angry. And I was wondering, why are you so angry? I would ask them, like my uncle Kazora parted mm, first mm, and, mm. and the banner de Tugiru. I remember they, they were so passionate with him and then when they part, they were angry. So I was saying, why are they angry until I parted with him over removal of term limits? Of term limits, yeah, eh? in 2005, eh? yeah. Many, mm. many people who are ignorant, they are all who are malicious. They are saying that, you see, when Matembe was dismissed from being a minister, that's when she, she parted company. No, what made us part was the removal of the term limit. I didn't want the term limit to be mm. removed because I was a commissioner and I knew what Uganda yes. is want. I knew the background to it. So when we parted on that issue, I got angry. I started getting angry and I realized why I was getting angry. I had to, to, to repent and abound it. I was getting angry because I came to realize that how can this man make me a fool? Mm. <laughs> so I, I felt that he made me a fool. How could I believe him 100% and become a fool that I was? Mm. So now I realize that's why everybody who parted with him were angry. Because he really makes you look like fools. For you, you are following genuinely 100% knowing that he's with you and you are aiming at one particular thing and that is serving Uganda and developing it and making it so democratic and making human rights enjoyable for you that's what is in your head we want a Uganda a better Uganda not a Uganda of wars and Uganda